This video is brought to you by TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy is a research and planning tool for YouTube creators. The software connects directly to your YouTube account to give you real-time suggestions on videos, keywords, ranking, and just about everything you need to grow your channel. TubeBuddy does this by integrating seamlessly with your YouTube account. Features appear on relevant pages to add information and suggestions for improvement. For example, uploading a video, you'll see suggestions for tags and a checklist of best practices important to the YouTube algorithm. It is 100% free, so if you're a YouTube creator looking to grow your channel, check out the link in the description below. And thank you again to TubeBuddy for sponsoring today's video. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we are doing another interview with the one and only Larry Zerner, who you may know from the wonderful Friday the 13th Part 3. He plays Shelly. You probably also recognize him from the video game, of course. And he is also, conveniently, a copyright lawyer. We've done two interviews with him before because he is unbelievable at breaking down this confusing lawsuit that surrounds the Friday the 13th the IP. And he once again offered to come back on and help explain where we are at in the appeal process and what the future may look like for Friday the 13th and this lawsuit as a whole. Thank you so much again to Larry for coming on to the show and just helping us dummies it's pretty much a lawsuit for dummies. That's what Larry's doing for us. Lawsuit for dummies, and uh, I really do appreciate it. Make sure you go follow him at both of his Twitter accounts, at Zerner Law, if you want to keep up the lawsuit directly from him, or at Larry Zerner. Go follow both of them, though. He definitely deserves all of the followers he could possibly get. He has been extremely useful in this, and all of us love him here in this, uh, in this wonderful Friday the 13th community. Now, with all that out of the way, thank you guys so much for watching, and enjoy the interview. All right, I'm gonna. I actually want to start in a really easy fashion. Just like, if you could break down the lawsuit it, from a very fundamental standpoint, like lawsuit for dummies, right? So we have like a bullet oh, point oh, format. Oh, oh, are we going back? I mean, because we can just tell people to watch the other video. We did. <laughs> just, I did break it down already. And like the sh just before we got dive into where we're at with the appeal, like as fast as you can. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Uh, all right. There is a provision in the Copyright Act that says that 35 years after you uh, transfer your copyright, you can file some, you can get it back. You have to actually give, you have to actually do it two years before, you have to give two years notice. Uh, so uh, that's what Victor did. Victor sent this notice, gave him two years notice that he was taking back his transfer of copyright, which would give him back the copyright only to his script in the original film and only in the United States, also oh, okay. good, all right? And uh, there's an exception in the Copyright Act to this rule, which is that you can't do it if your original uh, uh, transfer was done, if you're, you, when you wrote it, you wrote it as an employee, or it was a work for hire, but more this is important for this thing, or were you an employee, or were you an independent contractor? That is the, the key issue in this case. And so Sean sued, uh, Victor saying that when he wrote the script, he did it as an employee, not as a uh, independent contractor, and therefore he owns the copyright, and uh, Victor cannot uh, terminate the transfer. Easy, not bad. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> um, so, what happened recently? Well, not really. It's it seems like this keeps going by so fast, but it's actually been a long, long time. Um, that Victor won. He got the rights back to the original script in the United States. Uh, but now Sean, Horror Inc. are moving forward with an appeal process. Uh, where are we at now in that appeal? Okay. Yes. Uh, Victor won the lawsuit. That was a year ago. He, uh, and then uh, uh, Sean filed an appeal. There was, so the way the appeal works, uh, Sean filed his appellate, his moving papers. Uh, that was last June. And then uh, Victor uh, filed his, re his, his response, called an opposition brief. That was uh, in the beginning of September. And then uh, Sean filed his reply brief last week. Uh, uh, and so that's all the paperwork. Uh, uh, technically, they, they are both giving the court the 
the, the exhibits. There's some there's some minor paperwork that needs to get filed, but nothing substantive. Just the the, the records from the trial court, and um, that and the next thing that will happen is that um, the appellate court, the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, uh, will schedule oral arguments in the case, and that will occur. Uh, my best estimate is January, February of next year. Could 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 be December, but probably January, February of next year. And then after the oral arguments, and those might be, I, I know in the Ninth Circuit, those are those are streamed on YouTube. You can watch them live, or uh, uh, and then they're stored on YouTube. So you can just watch them anytime you want. And if they are, I'll certainly uh, have that on my Twitter feed. And by the way, if you're watching this and you're not following me on Twitter, you should because I, I constantly update on this case. So that's where to get the updates. It's at Zerner Law uh, for the legal stuff. Um, anyway, uh, uh, so uh, if, if there's a way to watch it, I'll tell you. There might, they might just be oral. It might just be audio. But in Ninth Circuit, there's video. And there's, so there could be video. You can watch the argument. And then assuming the, the oral arguments are in uh, January, February, the decision will probably come down in May or June of next, of 2020. Hmm. So I, that's not like that far away, if, if you think about well, it. Well, except, it, I mean, no, not now, but we keep, I mean, this all started in 2016. I mean. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so we get to there, we finally come to a decision, but then where are we at? What happens next? Okay, so these these are these are the 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 things that the court could do in in ruling. One, they could uphold the trial court's decision, saying that Victor owns the copyright, and uh, they, so that would be exactly as it is now. Uh, two, they could say no, uh, Sean actually owns the copyright, and. Uh, uh, and so Sean wins. Three, and this is the worst case scenario, and I just, I bring it to, this is the really scary one for the Friday their Deep fans. They could say, you know what? There, there are still questions of fact that needs to be decided. You need to go have a trial and have a jury decide some of these issues. You decide the issue of whether he was an employee or not. In which case, it goes back back to the trial court for a trial probably end of 2020 and then whatever decision is there that also gets appealed and then we're really so that's the worst case scenario here's my my best estimates are i'd say uh 70 percent victor wins uh on at the appeal 20 percent sean wins 10 percent they send it back down, uh, maybe even less. I'd say I, I I I think Victor will win. The Second Circuit has shown that it's it's pro. They had a case earlier this year involving uh, it was on different facts. It involved Ennio Morricone's music, and but it was very pro uh, artist and pro copyright terminations. So I I'm taking that from that that there is some uh, that they're they're going to be reluctant to rule in the way that Sean wants. Now, even here's it. if Victor wins or if Sean wins outright, one of those two things happen, either side can appeal to the Supreme Court. Um, will the Supreme Court take the case that uh, Supreme Court takes 1% of all the cases that come to them? This is an important case and, and, and they certainly might, uh, although usually they only do that when there's a circuit split. So, Second Circuit says one thing and the Ninth Circuit says another and there is no circuit split yet because no other case has ruled on this issue. Um, but uh, uh, it's, but so if they appeal the Supreme Court and they certainly might just try, that would they wouldn't have a the Supreme Court would decide in October of 2020 whether they would take it. And then if they did take it, it would be uh, heard, and then we'd get a decision in 2021, at, at, in May or June of 2021. So these are all the, well, but unlikely, very unlikely, the Supreme Court will take the case. Uh, so most likely, 
the most likely result is that May of 2020, we have a result uh, that Victor wins. Does that mean we get a movie? No, it does not mean we get a movie because they still got to make a deal. And what I hear is that it's very become very hard for them to make a deal because uh, Victor, wa- you know, Victor wants half. I, 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 I don't know this for a fact, but I'm understanding. He wants, you know, whatever the rights are, he says, I want half. And uh, the, um, the issue is, well, if they did a movie, right, if they come back and do a new Friday the 13th movie, it's going to be like the new Halloween, where it's adult Jason, right, and, it's, and he's coming back, or, or they might do, you know, they're not doing a remake of, of the first Friday the 13th with Mrs. Voorhees, uh, right? They're doing Jason with the hockey mask. And so there's not a lot of the first script Right. If you if you looked at like if you went back and did like looked at the remake, the 2009 remake, uh, was it 2009? Right. Yep. 2009. So, uh, right. Like how much of that was part one as opposed to part two and three and four. Right. It's not a lot. So you go, well, is is how much should Victor get? And that's Victor just goes, well, I want half because I haven't gotten shit for 39 years, you know, and I want I want what's mine now. And, um, uh, and 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 then the uh, the other question is merchandise, right? So you're doing, right, the the NECA uh, dolls and, and, and the Jason dolls, and 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 what should what should Victor get from that? How much did Victor create? If you do a a part three Jason, I mean, he he created Jason in a way, but in a way he didn't, and and certainly right in the in the although he owns the copyright, in you know it's sort of known that. He didn't really want the Jason coming out of the lake at the end. Uh, like all that was like, he didn't have anything to do with that. And yet that's what he's, uh, that was the thing that created it. So I think there's some bad blood in that, uh, you know, Sean's like, this is, this was my idea, not yours. You're not getting any money. So there's a, that's a really tough question. They obviously haven't been able to do it, work out a deal yet. And, you know, I don't know that, you know, certainly at at if once the court rules and they, they they're out of their appeals, then they're out of excuses. Someone's got to make a deal. But will someone make them, you know, sit down and do it? Will Warner Brothers make them sit down and do it or not? I, I don't know. Yeah, so it's still uh, it's still really messy no matter how you look at it. <laughs> uh, there's potential for for it to play out for a long time. But it, how I mean, would you assume either way at the as they come to a conclusion here in 2020 that they would go, both of them would try to attempt to appeal to the Supreme Court? No, only the loser appeals to the Supreme Court. Right. Winner doesn't appeal. I, that's what I, like, <laughs> yeah, see, either, yeah. Side, either side who loses will appeal to the Supreme Court. No <laughs> question. But, again, unlikely. They only take 1% of cases. And usually, you know, I, I don't, I mean, there are, you know, so you'd have to have, at least four justices who go, oh, this is this was wrong. Also, they have to think it's wrong. Uh, you got to have four judges because if 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 Victor wins, if Victor wins, I think that the judges will think, yeah, that was the right decision. So you, I don't. I think it'd be hard to find four judges who go, yeah, that was the wrong decision. If Sean wins, I think Victor would have a better shot in appeal because Sean's making a very radical argument, which is that any any script that was written under WGA, uh, under a WGA contract, is per se a, an employee agreement. It's that's a no court has ever ruled that. And if the court did take that ruling, I could see the Supreme Court wanting to weigh in on that. I think that's not what that's certainly not what Congress intended. Yeah, you mentioned in your tweet that like, or well, you've had a bunch of tweets about this, but there was a part where that in this briefing reply that Miller was an employee for hire and therefore Miller had to file a lawsuit within three years to challenge that assertion. And oh, that's the, that, that, they, that, it, that the copyright certificate listed, uh, horror Inc as the copyright, as the copyright holder as the, as the author. And there are some cases that say, if you know that the copyright certificate is wrong, you have three years to challenge that, you know, but no one ever, I mean, that's like, 
I understand why it's there, but like no one ever files that lawsuit. It's like I've never actually seen one done. So like the idea that in 1982 he was going to file some lawsuit because the copyrights have been wrong. You know, he just no one would even think about that. Mm. I, I don't think the court's going to rule give give that, but that's a possibility. They could say that. They could say they could say he's time barred. They they could say that. You mentioned that if like the court were to do that, if they were to uphold because of that reason, that it would be bad for screenwriters everywhere. Like, how would that affect other screenwriters? Well, it would mean that because right, screenwriters sell their script. They they haven't especially back in the 80s, they weren't copy, They weren't registering with the copyright office. First, they would register with the WGA, which I can go on for, don't ever <laughs> register anything with the WGA. It's horrible. Just register with the copyright office. Anyway, they register with the WGA, and then the studio gets it, and they register it, and they see a registration, and the registration, they're going to register it under the studio. And, and they're registering the film, not the script, but the, the film – Copyright includes the screenplay, and that's that's Sean's argument. Well, it said it included the screenplay, so you had to know that you had to fight this. And he, nobody would think that. Nobody. But it would be like then no, but no screenwriter could go back and terminate their transfers because they didn't know that the copyright certificate that was done in you know forty years ago, thirty five years ago was wrong because they didn't even check. And by the way, it wasn't online. We didn't have the internet. Um, right in 1980 so you couldn't even check now you can check but you know it's like it's crazy it's a crazy crazy theory um, I don't think it, it'll happen well that's that's what? good at least <laughs> uh, I did want to ask this is actually just really convenient that we're talking today because Bloody Disgusting posted an article today I don't know if you saw it about other yeah I'm quoted I'm quoted in it oh are you I didn't even see yeah, that yeah. Well, look, oh, oh yeah. you are. You're right there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right there. They took it from the Hollywood Reporter. The Hollywood Reporter did a story and then bloody disgusting sort of rewrote it from there. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, like they're talking about all of these franchises, including the Terminator, Predator, uh, yeah. Beetlejuice on there. Pretty much every Stephen King uh, film adaptations on there. So right. like are, are, are those fi- franchises that like potential to be in this same Friday the 13th situation or is it just like a really, really unique beef that they got here between Victor yeah, well, and Sean. Well, like, yeah, a lot of these that they talk about were books, you know, that were then adapted. So then there, in those cases, there's no question, right? The studio can't say, well, it was a work for hire because it was a book. They're they're buying the book. So you don't really have that issue when you're buying the book. Um, and and most of these, you know, Friday the 13th is, is sort of unusual in that it has this long history. And also, it's hard to make a deal because of this thing about, well, where is the money in the Friday the 13th franchise? Is it in part one or is it in all the other parts? Whereas in the other horror franchises, you know, Nightmare, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, et cetera, the, the, the first movie sets the template for all of them. Friday the 13th is really different in that the first movie doesn't set the template at all, right? It sets a, a setting, but the killer is not. And and uh, right, they don't even see the killer. It's it's a, right the so it's a different. The, the first movie is a very different movie than any of the other movies, and that's I don't know that there's another franchise like that. That's true. Yeah, it's a it's a really odd situation in terms of the franchise. Like I don't know what I would do if I was the one that had to judge this lawsuit. You know, it's like I see where the favor should be, and you know, you always want to help artists and ind- independent artists like that um, who are creating things. But it, it is really weird because, like, the money in the franchise, a lot of it sits within the hands of adult Jason. Yeah, I said I've said I said what what they should do is they should go to a binding arbitration, and the the arbitrators should be John Carpenter and uh, um, uh, Jordan Peele and uh, Stephen King, and and let them rule. And then everyone agrees that, that whatever they say should be the should be the rule. Gosh, you meant, that would be so cool. <laughs> that could actually just be an option. That would be so I, cool. I know. And when, when you could just sell tickets to the trial. Yeah, <laughs> let's just really we've been reaping all the benefits as we as they can here. <laughs> you know, I I did also want to ask you about it because I think because this actually like bothered me. I was genuinely upset when I read this, and it was horror ranks use of Victor's residuals as evidence of why he shouldn't get back his rights 
to the original film. And the fact that he made yeah. like what two hundred twenty thousand dollars across thirty nine years, and yeah. I, like that, like genuinely upset me. As you, you know, the franchise sits on probably close to a billion dollars at this point. Uh, so yeah, I just like. Can you like weigh in on that and just how yeah, much? Yeah, so it, it, what, what, what Riley's talking about is that in the brief, in the in Sean's last reply brief, they're like, look, Victor made $220,000 over the in residuals over the past 39 years, which doing the math, it's 5,600 a year. Uh, you know, and I was like, I was, always, I was outraged because it's like when you've made hundreds of millions of dollars. Hundreds of millions of dollars. Sean alone has made tens of millions of dollars. And you're like, oh, we're paying him $5,600 a year. He created this. I mean, that's exactly why Congress put in this this thing about termination. Because after 35 years, they're like, you can go make a new deal and get the money that you you didn't know, right? If you had you known at the t- in 1980 that this was going to be worth that much money, he would have made a different deal. And, and, you know, we don't have time machines, but we do have this ability to go back in time. And that was one of the things, because remember copyright, uh, maybe you don't remember, copyright used to be, well, it used to be 56 years, and then it became 75 years, and then it became 95 years. And they're like, well, one of the, re- we're extending it, so you, the people who buy it, well, you've got this extra time, but we're going to get these original people the ability to come back and make a new deal, and you have to share the money with them. Because we're giving you at least you know twenty or forty extra years with, with the copyright. Yeah, like just even just to give it somebody to give it something relatable for it. Like I think uh, a quote from the great late Steve Dash actually would be pretty useful here because he said that if I'd known what I know now, then I would have played Jason throughout the whole franchise. That's a perfect example of things that uh, you just don't know what it's worth until it has time to build up. That's right. That's right. Because it wasn't right. It wasn't really until part three, right? One, one did well. Two did okay. I mean, right? But then it was three. Thank you very much. <laughs> that really brought it back because it was in three D and it and it and it was a it was it was huge. Uh, and then four and then four was did pretty good well. So you know then it, then it then it was a thing. But it wasn't really until three and four that it became. Oh, now we're just going to do them all the time. 